You're listening to the DCAU Review, hosted by Cal and Liam, streaming on iTunes, Google Podcasts, and at DCAUreview.com. Now, here's today's episode. Hey, everybody. Welcome to episode 27 of the DCAU Review. With me, as always, is my co-host, Cal. I am Liam. Cal, we've got a double feature here today. We have a giant-sized episode today of the DCAU Review. Uh, We are staying still in Gotham City, the future Gotham City, though. We're continuing our look at some episodes of Batman Beyond. Uh, We have have kept in order here, uh, so that means uh, our first episode, we're going to review two today. First of our two episodes... Uh, is the third episode that they uh, that plays on our DVD. I don't know about the production order of Batman Beyond, but it's, uh, I guess that they play them in order that they were produced or they were played on TV. So the the first episode we're going to cover today is Blackout, Liam. Yeah, so that's, this is uh, the first appearance of Ink in the series. It goes a little bit more into world building, uh, more Derek Powers corporate espionage. It's so good. And it's awesome. <laughs> it's really good. And uh, we can jump right into plot here. Yeah. Uh, so basically, Derek Powers hires Inc. to uh, sabotage Fox Tekka. Fox the... Tekka, that's right. Make sure it's Tekka, not Tech. Yes, it looks. I thought it was Tech on the sign, but it is made very clear, but through dialogue, uh, that that's not an H, that's an A. That's a futuristic term, I guess. Tekka, Correct. Tekka. Uh, f- like that feel that feels very uh, anime or something. Yeah. I don't know. I but have no idea why they call it Tekka. Retro future. I don't know. But anyway, uh, so Derek Powers hires Inc. Uh, of course, Bruce Wayne has a vested interest in not seeing Fox Tekka go the way of, of so many other companies that Derek Powers has taken over or or put out of business. Yeah. Because, as he mentions, Lucius Fox was a huge part of Wayne Enterprises, and Lucius Jr. was the vice president of the company until Derek took over and fired him. Yeah. Which, again, they, they go over that dialogue pretty quickly, but, again, it's just a little bit... You didn't need... It didn't need to be Fox Tekka. It could have been just generic tech company number five, but... Those little extra bits, I think, help, again, flesh out, the first of all, the type of person that Derek Powers is, yep. and uh, how what his motivations are, and how he very clearly somehow took over Wayne Enterprises, pushed Bruce Wayne out of that role, and immediately went to work kind of destroying, or, or changing, at least, what, what Bruce and Bruce's family had built. Well, and, and doing so, maybe not with... Uh, intentional vitriol, but just he doesn't he doesn't have any respect for the past. Clearly, Bruce Correct. had a uh, relationship with Lucius Fox uh, in the old animated series, um, and uh, you know he makes it known that his son was uh, the vice president, as you said. Uh, but Derek doesn't have any respect for him because he just cares about amassing power. Obviously, yes. they made that very clear in the ver- very first two episodes. Yeah, so there's there's some really good building in there, and then you have some some cool fight scenes which we'll certainly get into in visuals. But yeah, I went ahead, I gave plot 6 out of 10. I okay. think it's I think it's good. I think uh but it is basic. I think it it leans more towards good than than bad certainly. Mm-hmm. Um but it is a pretty basic plot of just, you know, evil businessman hired has a hired gun who happens to be a metahuman. Uh, she runs afoul of Batman, and then they fight, and that's kind of it. So I'm I'm going to disagree with you slightly. And, and is that the disagreement alarm? It is. It warning. Is. Um, yeah, the disagreement alarm is going off. Um, so I'm going to disagree with you slightly, and that I I don't think it's that basic of a plot. I think that um, resetting this and and putting our eyes on it, it's a children's cartoon. Sure. As, first and foremost, as we've said, even though now now. We're getting into some of the later cartoons. You know, they're airing on Saturday mornings, but they're certainly not geared. This, I would say, Batman Beyond's age range would probably be more like uh, what you think, tw- 14, 13? Yeah, thirteen, thirteen and up, to fifteen, or yeah. something like that. Yeah, and, and up, like okay, so it's it's a little more advanced. Uh, so this, like you like you said, it's it has to do with corporate sabotage and sure. uh Derek Powers is trying to they're both vying for the same contract uh government contract or something and that you know he's trying to sabotage the other company that, that has a chance at getting it and um he's hiring an international terrorist uh, in order to do it uh so it's it's a little I don't think it's 
I think calling it basic, it, for, for me, calling it basic is a little bit of an understatement. And for that, okay. because I think it's a little bit more advanced, I think the plot is very good. I think that it's there's not a lot of fat in this episode. There's not a lot that, that they, like, oh, well, they didn't really need that, or that's sure. a little... Uh, Deus Ex Machina. Um, there's not a lot of that. It's straightforward. They they they're great in getting you to understand what the point of the plot is, and uh, I think it's very effective in doing it. So I, I gave it eight out of ten uh, okay. for the plot. So that, it, I mean, it's only two points higher than yours. So it's not that big of a disagreement. Maybe we didn't need the disagreement <laughs> alarm. <laughs> I don't know. I think I think there's a big difference in our in our rating scales between a six and an eight. That, this uh, is true. I think uh, when you when you when you're ranking out of ten, that's a you know that's a difference between a D and a B. Hey, there you go. Um, Absolutely. So that's that's a little different. Uh, moving on to music here. Yeah. Uh, you mentioned in our in last week when we talked about rebirth, the sort of inconsistency <laughs> it was of, all over of the place. genre of music. That's a good word for it. All over the place. Yeah. Uh, this week, a lot more consistent. I thought. Yeah. Uh, it's it's really good. You got a lot of rock music. The tempos up, especially during those fight scenes uh, with Ink, where he's uh, you know, Terry is it's established Terry's never fought anything like Ink before. And again, we'll get into more of that in visuals, but um, the music I thought added to that. There's a certain frantic pace to it. Yep. Of he's he's a little out of his league, he's getting he's getting his at he's getting his butt kicked a little bit. Yep. And uh, so I went I gave him music eight out of ten. I thought it was really strong and uh, definitely it I thought it added a lot to the overall the feelings they're going for. Yeah, I, I I would agree with you. Um, actually, uh, I also gave the score an eight out of ten. Um, the music music is really really good, really strong in this. Uh, and, and as you already mentioned, it's way more consistent than the first episode. Um, and uh, you know, it's an instantly memorable theme uh, that they use throughout it. It was interesting. You, you pointed out that uh, unlike the other other two shows that we've watched thus far. Uh, there is no like Terry's main theme or the main theme for Terry's Batman is not his theme song like it's not the it's not the opening credits theme correct uh, whereas with Superman that is his it, you know you, you have the Superman theme song that's Superman's theme Batman it's his opening credits theme song or a variation thereof yes um, with Terry it's a little bit different it's just rock music uh, typically. And thus far, and, and we'll you know we'll see how we go further into the, the episodes. But the theme from this episode, I think, is really good. It's really catchy, um, and it it definitely lends to each scene that it's in. Specifically, the the first scene between Terry and Ink, uh, where they're battling on the rooftop, uh, and she's there's a scene where Terry is running and right at the screen. Um, and yeah. uh, she's coming up from underneath, underneath like the the concrete behind him. The the her chasing him and it really adds to some tension, adds some tension to the scene. I think so. Yeah, eight, eight out of ten was my score for that one as well. Awesome. We can move on right here, as you mentioned, with that scene of, of Terry running away. There. Yeah, that's a perfect segue to talk about the visuals. Yeah, and, man. Uh, that to me was the strongest part of this episode by far. Yeah. Um, as you mentioned the scene uh, ink is is very fluid she's very uh yeah. it's different than really any other character with similar abilities that we've seen mm-hmm. uh we haven't yet reviewed it but if you if you remember the clayface in the original batman the animated series or something like elongated man in justice league unlimited or something characters that can stretch and bend and shape shift and that kind of stuff uh she's completely different she's more of a fluid like it's more it, like when she uh, you know, lands and kind of splatters. She kind of turns into like a puddle, like like, a, like ink. Yeah, it actually, she looks like <laughs> ink. Like, a, uh, Whoa. <laughs> yeah, that's actually that's a perfect, perfect word. That's probably why they gave her that name. But uh, no, no, I think you're absolutely right. I think, um, I think it, it should, they could have very easily ha- have made her just kind of. I I don't know. This is going to sound very strange, but you know. Clayface is dense, like you you can tell like he it's heavy. Like yeah. he's a large character, whether it's in the new Batman Adventures or if it's in the, the, the original Batman animated series. He it looks like he weighs like clay is not something that's very light. It's heavy. Right. It's thick. You know, it's, it's still it's, and he still moves when he's in his normal clay face form very in a very human way. And it, and and not it doesn't seem to move 
very quickly. Like he right. still he he has a bit of a, a, a slowness to him, mm-hmm. uh, a lumbering. A, yeah, if you more will. of a, an old school like horror movie monster. So Correct, kind of lurches towards you. And whereas whereas Ink is, she's all over the place. She's she's like like water, like like liquid. Um, yeah, man. I, I I think that the the way that they went about designing her, uh, they could have just as easily made her. Um, just like like carbon copy of Clayface, and I, and I think that that was something that you pointed out. We were watching that works so well for the character because she's not just a, a rubber stamp of any of the other guys that you see. She has some tendencies or, or some some similar visual aspects to some uh, some of the elongated man stuff that we see sure. um, in um, in Justice League, but uh, different enough to stand out and be it, her own unique character. For sure. Oh, um, what was your What was your score for visuals? So my score for visuals is ten out of ten. Yeah. Uh, we didn't We didn't cover it yet, but the the final little bits of uh, well, she hitches a ride on the Batmobile back to the Batcave. Which, by the way, very first in- cool visual. The very first introduction of the brand new Batmobile. Correct. What did you think of the new Batmobile? Before we get I to love that, that scene, I love that it's design. Cool. I love I love all the shots of him inside the cockpit of. Uh, I like the when red he plugs lighting. in plugs into yes. it. His gloves kind of light up with the uh, circuitry. Yeah, you see the circuitry lighting up. That's all. Uh, the visuals of that are tremendous. Yeah, every scene um, in the Batmobile too, with that red glow, mm-hmm. really works really well too. It's instantly, like it's one of the things I think about when I think about this series as a whole is. Is definitely Terry in that in that Batmobile, so that that's pretty cool. But yeah, so Ink hitches a ride on the Batmobile, and uh, they have a fight scene in the in the Batcave. We see Bruce wearing the gray ghost so mask cool, to hide man. his identity. Uh, there's scenes of her trying to get up into the manor to figure out who who Batman is. And they're, they're slamming doors shut on her, electrocuting her. She goes up into the ceiling. There's some tension there too, because if you, I mean, we've seen this episode obviously before, but right. if you don't know, like, I, there's some tension there. What if she gets up there? What if she finds right. out these, like, what, yeah. ha- what's going to happen? Like, imagine Derek Powers knowing that Bruce Wayne was Batman and that Terry is the new Batman. Agreed. Uh, that's there's a lot of layers to that, and so them the sort of franticness of them trying to. Uh, of stop her and she goes up into the ceiling and starts bringing trying to basically cause a cave in in the bat cave and then uh, I I like also that they didn't just use the water plot like they introduced in this the first scene that we mentioned where she yeah. and Terry meet that she doesn't like water um, so Bruce first kind of defeats her with a fire hose and it would, I think it would have been very easy to just kind of like have that be the simplistic end, but of course yes. they didn't do it that way. There's some more cool visuals. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, and a nice nod to the old, the old series. Yeah, absolutely. So, uh, there, there's a part, as you mentioned with the fire hose, uh, ink has basically tied Terry up and she starts yeah, suffocating him right. by basically shoving her entire body down his esophagus to, <laughs> to suffocate. Such a weird it's visual. creepy and weird. <laughs> And it's like, you remember, there's an episode of, of Batman where Clayface puts Batman inside of him to suffocate him. Yeah. Which is weird. This is so much weirder. Yes, agreed. Uh, and sh- so he's basically like, he's choking to death or, or <laughs> suffocating to death. And then Bruce hits her with the fire hose. And it looks <laughs> then like... Then Terry gets to vomit her up. Yes. And they show him uh, almost <laughs> literally puking uh, ink out of his... Uh, out of, his, out of his mouth. It's, it's, it's real gross and real weird. But again, it's another interesting visual thing that you had never seen before with a character like that. Right. So it does add add something. Another weapon in her arsenal, so to speak. And then, yeah, at the end, as they're they're fighting through the Bat Cave, the trophy cases have been established early on the the memorabilia of all the weapon of uh, weapons and costumes of the old villains. And uh, Terry is trapped underneath the giant penny from Almost Got Him, <laughs> and uh, and then happens to be able to get to the Mister Freeze gun, and uh, and freezes Ink, and that's how Ink is stopped. Super cool. Um, again, and we talked about that last week about you know the nods to the old shows without going too far. Um, and at the end, Terry has a, a cute little line about how you got to show me everything about like, yeah. and, you know, really let him into that, you know, explain what, what things are, are going to be things, like here. Right. And what things are in the cave. Cause he was surprised that Bruce had the, the ability to block her from going upstairs yes. and all that. And what, probably what all the old villains and stuff yes, were up so, to too. Um, you know, his tech secrets and sure. all that. It's a, that's, so that adds, again, just more and more world building. But like I said, I, I gave visuals 10 out of 10. Uh, how about you, Cal? I also gave visuals 
10 out of 10. All right. So two perfect scores for the both of us on that. I uh, guess, Liam, that takes us to our last category. Yes, it does. We're moving on to voice acting here. Uh, pretty strong cast here. We had Shannon Kenny Azanka, a veteran voice actress. She's really good. She's very under. I mean, they don't ask a lot of her. Um, sure. the, the voice effect that they put on her when she's in the ink form is really good because it adds a little bit of creepiness to her. She's British. So, like, okay, she, she's British and yeah. she sounds cool. Um, but, you know, I, I think she's she's really good. Yeah, and there's like there's a little difference from when she's in her more oozy form to when she takes the more humanoid form. Mm-hmm. There's like a little extra filter put on her voice when she's less human, which I think is is a, a nice little touch. Mm-hmm. Uh, we have our first appearance as of uh, Stockard Channing as Bar- as Commissioner Barbara Gordon at yep. the end of the episode. Uh, very minor role, but worth mentioning. And then uh, at the we also of course have uh, the the old standards now of. We've only done one episode, but they're still they're old standards to us because gonna, they've been doing it for so long. Right, they're going to be but, standards. Uh, you know, Will Will Friedle is as Batman. You have Bruce Wayne as, as Kevin Conroy, of course, and and Sherman Howard as Derek Powers. By the way, Sherman Howard as Derek Powers in this episode is terrific. He's awesome. Um, my our, we we laughed, and not because it was bad, but because it was just the perfect response. There's a scene where ink and and Derek powers are sitting in the back of his limo and uh she mentions that batman has foiled one of her plans or one of their plans and he starts to get angry and his skin starts cracking <laughs> and she looks at her and that that in and of itself is a cool visual yes uh, where he, he starts his skin starts cracking and his hair starts falling out and she looks over at him and she says what's wrong with you who i don't know he wore a costume black and red the Batman? What difference does it make? What's happening to you? I have a condition. <laughs> and his perfect Derek Powers voice. I have a condition. <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, he's just sitting there. His eyes are glowing neon green. His hair is like uh-huh. chunks of it have fallen out. His cr- skin's all crackly. I have a condition. <laughs> it's, it's fantastic, man. <laughs> it was. It's the perfect delivery. It's the perfectly written line. Um, I think everybody does such a great job in this episode. Kevin Conroy finds his, uh, you know, is is finding his uh, his sweet spot as old man Bruce. Uh, I think uh, yeah. Will Friedle, we as we talked about in, in last episode, is 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 good. Uh, he doesn't have a have a lot of range of emotions in this uh, episode that he has to express as he did in the first episode. But I, I think he does a great job. So my score for uh, for voice acting was ten out of ten. Oh my gosh, another one. Another 10. And speaking of that, my score for voice acting was, in fact, 10 out of 10. Ah. Uh, as you mentioned, uh, uh, his, his the biggest part of the, the growing pains of Terry becoming Batman, Of there's the, the line that was uh, used that we mentioned was used in a lot of the, the promos on Kids WB was, you might be used to uh, dealing with freaks and monsters, but I'm new at this. Right. You may be used to dealing with freaks and monsters, but I'm a little new at this. I don't even know what half this stuff is. Way before your time, and of course, and that adds in, you know, all these things Bruce has seen. Of, you know, obviously we don't know yet, but he's been through the justice, you know, of Dark Side and mm-hmm. and Clayface and all these insane villains that he's fought over the years. Terry took down a guy who was tall in right. the first episode. <laughs> I had electric brass knuckles, <laughs> right? And he took down some security guards. Like right. now, he's dealing with grade A super villains, right. and he's. Obviously, not was not prepared to to dive head first into a situation like that. So, sign of the surprise and the the growing pains. I thought Will did a really good job there. And there was another good powers line also, where his second straight episode where he basically mocks Terry for his dad being dead. <laughs> where he's like, he's like, because uh, there's actually a really great scene between Bruce and and Derek Powers at the beginning. We mentioned yes, uh, where he's making Bruce comes to to Wayne Tech or to Wayne Enterprises to make sure or Wayne Powers whatever it's called now um to make sure that uh that Derek Powers knows that he's keeping an eye on things and doesn't think it's a coincidence that uh, all of these attacks have taken place on on Fox Tekka um yes but uh Powers is it finds out that uh Terry McGinnis is now working for Bruce and he says <laughs> he says well yeah I guess now that your father's dead you have to be the breadwinner or your father's <laughs> not around you have to be the breadwinner yeah. it's like oh man that's, that's <laughs> a, a slam on Terry and Terry's dad be kind of a slam on Terry's mom right <laughs> and so like, so uh, good he's like, so evil he's so bad yeah but it's good he, right. he's tremendous and I guess that's uh, that's about to bring us to our final score for our first episode here but 
Hold on. I hear a sound, Liam, and that must mean that you have a bonus point for today's episode. I do, and as we mentioned sort of briefly in visuals, it's for the, one, the ending of him using the Mr. Freeze gun, complete with the original Mr. Freeze gun sound effect nice. to trap ink, but also just the giant penny, all the suits you saw. Everybody you saw Harley Quinn. You saw the big giant Joker card that's hanging yep. up. Riddler's suit, Penguin, Catwoman, uh, Mad Hatter. Who didn't get a glass case, by That's the way, true. you noticed. And by, I, I also like that the Scarface puppet is dismembered. Like, it was one of the ones you that got shot, shot up. up. Yes. Because that was one of the, the running gags every time they use Scarface, because <laughs> they don't really get to be violent with real humans. The puppet had to get, like, terribly mutilated in every episode that he appears in. So, yeah, he's got bullet holes, and his clothes are all jagged. But it's just, again... Those little nods like we talked about, uh, I thought that was worth giving a plus one for. There you go. So, so that brings my final score uh, for this episode, our first episode, Blackout, here, to 35 out of 40. What about you, Cal? Um, I ended up being very close. Not the same. Not the same. 36 out of 40. 36. Really so. good. Really high, highly rated, and I think you and I were both surprised when we got, got to the end. We were like... Does this episode like deserve this? This like is it that good? And it is. It's good in and and it's hard because now we've gotten into we've done twenty seven episodes. We've done more than twenty or we've done twenty seven episodes of the DCA review. Some of those reviewing multiple episodes. Some yeah. of them reviewing movies. And you're gonna start getting into that case where you're like, well, is this as good as this other one that I didn't rank just this as high? And it's gonna be there's like a trap there to fall into. Well, I can't rank it. We were talking like, oh, well, is this as good as POV? And like, no, POV is way better than. Right. But in a vacuum, like as a standalone episode by itself, this episode is really, really good. And if it happens to rank higher than some of the other episodes that we've ranked, then it just it's some it doesn't speak to the episode's rewatchability or Very true. or the if it's good or not. It's just by the criteria that we're ranking things. Yes, yeah. it just ranks as an overall better episode. Yeah. You can go back and look at you know underdwellers dollar in the underdweller jar gosh darn it that has you know with the plot for that episode had a three but maybe i I think we gave animation six or seven or something like that probably so that has a better animation score than the gray ghost episode for me but i love i will watch the gray ghost episode a thousand times out of a thousand and i pray to god i will never (laughs) have to watch the underdwellers again dollar in the underdweller jar (laughs) so yeah, so yeah. It, it doesn't mean that this is an overall... Be- I mean, it just overall score, it's better than we've ranked some of the other episodes. Yeah, something like uh, like Late Mr. Ken or something. That's obviously, from a plot standpoint, I think is, is far more interesting, far more unique sure. as far as a plot goes. But, I mean, again, this is all subjective reviews, and for the categories we're ranking, as you said... I- I, I'm not. We're not. What we're trying to say is we're not apologizing for ranking this episode Certainly so not. highly. This no. is this is very good, and it checks a lot of boxes as far as again continuing to build the early days of the of uh, of Terry McGinnis as the new Batman. And so. as far as rewatchability, I actually get like I would watch this episode oh, yeah. again. Like it's, it's a good episode. It's entertaining. It's fun. Especially the stuff the battle in the Batcave at the end of the episode makes it a really yeah. really fun cool episode. All right, Liam, um, you ready to move on to our next episode then? Yeah, I think we are. So we watched our next episode, which would be episode, if you count Rebirth as two parts, this would be episode four right. of Batman Beyond. Uh, it's just simply called Golem, which mm-hmm. is the, we find out is the name of the robot uh, later on. Which is weird. The episode is called Golem, G-O-L-E-M, but they use the acronym, it's just G-L-M in the, Correct. In the which is, I, I didn't even write it, bother to write it down. It's some sort <laughs> of machinery equipment that they use to construct buildings. It's Yes. We, we're told it's two stories high and weighs a couple tons or five tons or something Correct. like that. Uh, so <laughs> comparing this... We just talked about you know some of the you know the sort of uh, corporate espionage and 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 world building and all this stuff. We go from that to an episode that feels like it could have come out of like a 1960s Spider-Man comic in yeah, some ways. Absolutely, it feels like it could be like uh, an anime serial in some ways. Yep. Like, and it it feels like some of it's like a like 1980s jock versus nerd uh revenge movie 
Yeah. Uh, there's, there's a lot of a lot of clashing genres here, um, and I guess we can jump right into the plot here. Yeah, and I think we're going to fall... There are going to be some episodes. Like, for instance, the, the one that comes to mind is the Egg Baby episode that everybody hates. <laughs> um, you're going to have some episodes because this... Your main character in this episode, or in this series, is a 17-year-old high school student. Just like every Spider-Man movie that is about high school Spider-Man for some reason. Yes. Uh, we can't get him out of... Out of freaking high school he has to be in high school perpetually in the movies um it, it, you're gonna what do high schoolers deal with they deal with high school problems and most of those high school problems are bullying and girl problems and so not to defend this episode in any sort of way but i don't think this is going to be the last episode that we roll our eyes and say oh boy like really sure. this is the this is the plot like ugh. Like this is this is a joke, but that's that's not to say that this episode is not a joke. It's no. it's it's not very good. And again, it's it's just silly. The word that kept coming to mind for me was silly. Yeah, like, there's a lot of silly stuff, and and like I had some fun watching. As we can get into, uh, we can start with plot here. Um, plot's not good. It's basically Nelson Nash, the the Flash Thompson type archetype that we met in in Rebirth Part One. Uh, is making life miserable for this skinny nerd named Willie Watt, and uh, and so Willie Watt, uh, through making a, a psychic link with this golem robot, just by happenstance, right? By the way. Uh, his dad happens to run construction sites. He steals the tech. Nobody notices that a, right. that a two story robot is walking <laughs> across the the city from this construction site to a mall. But right. okay, and then, uh, then despite he, everyone knowing it's missing, correct. Uh, and then there's uh, electrocution. Yep. Um, which then somehow makes him not need a headset to control it anymore. Which you, which, you, which you said accurately reminds you of like a sixty like a fifties or sixties Batman comic or yes. uh, villain origin. Yeah. He's or even a Spider-Man linked. villain yes. origin, honestly. Yes. Like, it's, like Electro, I'm pretty sure just got electrocuted. <laughs> <laughs> like, and now he has right, electric, right. Um, electricity power. So it's just that that very basic. It's it, again, it's a sci-fi comic booky type origin plot. Sure. You want to get to the point where the kid can control the robot. So you're like, eh, electricity, right. technology. Like it's the right. future. You don't have to explain it. Right. Um, but uh, because of some of that, and then yeah, the the ending. Is it's just Batman fights the robot at an amusement park. Basically, there's some kind of dance happening there for whatever reason. I guess so there could be a pier nearby that uh, people could keep getting thrown in, thrown into the I water guess. from. But uh, and, and ba- Willie decides he's going to kill Nelson and his own father. Yeah, the and father's anybody else. plot line just seemed to. I mean, there was there was sort of alluded to it from the opening scene that his dad was kind of like you know rough tough he maybe used to be a jock yeah. and he's like disappointed that his son is the skinny nerdy yes. like pushover so he wants his son to be tough but it, it didn't seem like worthy of his son wanting to kill him no no it didn't <laughs> like out of nowhere like you said <laughs> you were lying before we went on the airways he went from zero to sociopath <laughs> in, in like 30 seconds yes uh so that's because of all of the stuff we've just talked about i gave plot three out of ten Ooh. it's it's not very good, and it doesn't yeah. make a ton of sense if you examine it. Like I said, it's not that there's no fun to be had. Uh, there is some, and we'll get to that maybe in, in visuals and voice maybe. acting later. <laughs> but uh, overall, this is, I mean, this is definitely, I mean, obviously we've only reviewed three so far, but this is definitely the, or uh, I guess now four technically. Yeah. Uh, this is definitely the worst Batman Beyond we've reviewed so far. Sure. And it, comparing it to some of the other ones we we've, we've reviewed it's just it's it's not very good yeah I, I am in agreement with you i didn't rank it as low i wasn't as offended i just kind of thought it was thought it was middle of the road i mean despite having the like i said take it into consideration that it is a a you know your average age is 13 to 14 year old watching this and you're supposed to identify with a 17 year old batman okay uh, but that the other thing is there's not a lot of batman in this episode it's a willie watt story <laughs> yeah uh it's about willie it's about him trying to get revenge on the bully and uh whereas in, in past episodes we've talked about making a villain sort of sympathetic where you, i mean you you, you 
have a borderline bully story, obviously extrapolated and, and certainly made much deeper, but you have a bully story in Heart of Ice if you're going to look sure. at it. Um, and uh, it, that's done very well. And like we've talked about that you made Mr. Freeze a, a very sympathetic character. Willie's not very sympathetic. It's not very – he's not a sympathetic character. Like I don't yeah. feel – you feel bad for him initially because he's trying to get the hot girl, I guess, and he's <laughs> not attractive. But like – But like – like, that's also that's... like another like eighties movie plot that has kind of gone away because like here's the thing. Like hot girls don't owe nerds anything. Right. Like it's not her fault. So, like she's not a bad person because she's not attracted right. to Willie. Exactly. Like her boyfriend Nelson is being a jerk to him, and that part is okay, pretty universal. Like bullying is bad. Right. Like that part of it you can take of okay, the kid who's been bullied so much can take no more and he finally gets this power and he exactly tries to exact revenge. But like, but like you said, it's more, it seems to be more about him wanting to get the girl and, yeah. and like, I, I don't know. Anyway. So I just gave it a five out of 10, five out of 10 was my score for, for, for plot. That's uh that's fair enough. We can move on to music here. Uh, I didn't really notice any music in this episode. Instantly forgettable, I think, is what I would say. That's a good word for it. Uh, well, yes, we don't really have to talk about this very long. Game music, 5 out of 10. There was obviously nothing offensive by it, but there was uh, there was nothing really that good either. There's just, like, again, some decent music during the action beats, but nothing nothing that really stands out. So I just went to the old uh, the old standby of five out of ten. What about you? Uh, I actually, and I'm I'm doing some post post uh, scoring work here, thinking about it because it's forgettable. Like this episode could have used music to maybe make it memorable. Fair uh, missed out, swing and a miss on that one. Um, I'm sure there was some rock music in the background. <laughs> and uh, if you want to tweet it at us and and remind us if we miss some a, a good good uh some good scoring please do uh but i don't remember anything from it so i'm gonna and i didn't take take the note uh during the episode to to notice anything memorable so i gave it four out of ten that's fair and we can move right on to visuals here please do. um <laughs> this is probably the strongest part of the episode is the visuals sure uh some of the agree. stuff with willie interfacing with the robot it'll be like a close-up of his eyes and you'll see the circuitry of the robot, and then it'll fade out into like the eye camera of the robot. Uh-huh. Um, there's a cool shot, of, like a, like from the robot's perspective, that's looking at Batman at one point, where he's kind of in shadow. That's pretty cool. Uh-huh. But overall, and a lot of it again felt very anime to me, of like the the kids screaming, and there's like green energy coming off of them, and then it. Like the robot rises up into into frame of the camera mm-hmm. and like smashes the ground. Yep. Like that felt super uh, super anime to me. And I would agree. And that's and again some of it's good, but uh, and the storyline, like you said, lends itself to that type of plot. Oh sure. But it, it yeah yeah. So I, I went five out of ten. Like I said, those are the strong points. There is some inconsistencies that we pointed out also in that and in that initially when he first gets the powers there's like electricity like happening around his head yeah like you see the electric shocks happening around his head then all of a sudden in the middle of it there's green energy that happens like he yeah like he powers up like he's in street fighters (laughs) or or mortal Kombat or something like that um and then at the end of it it's back to like a combination of the two it's it's kind of inconsistent on it one of the cool visual things that that premiered in this episode that uh goes on to become a big uh, plot point and uh, an important part of the Batman Beyond suit is the camouflage mode, the camo mode, Ooh, yes. the invisibility. Uh, cool, cool introduction. Um, we talked a little bit about a couple weeks ago on the you know evil episode, um, the way that they did it. And I think it it's effective and it, it's different than the way they did the Invisible Man. Um, and I think it it it's effective in that um, you know you see you can the viewers obviously can still see where Batman is based on the fact that you, he's just shot. Like you just see the shadow off of him, basically. Yeah, um, and it's done really well. It's a, it's a cool feature that they added to the suit, and uh, you know, it, just something cool that premiered in that. It's a cool visual, um, and uh, I, I think that's there's one there's one of oh, the the closing scene where they they flash to Willie and he's in the uh, juvenile detention center. It's it's all shadows except for his glasses, which are lit up. Yeah, um, and uh, kind of cool. It's just just a cool decision to light the scene that way um beyond that nothing super spectacular i gave it six out of ten i felt like that the robot could have been designed a little bit differently and we talked about one of the maybe the cool thing is is this 
like the, the robot it kind of looks a little like some robots we've seen in other DCAU shows or mm-hmm. the, and like the idea of like the killer robots of the past are now just like everyday <laughs> Use they have jobs robots. now. <laughs> right. They're just like, everybody can use these robots now. Right. Um, because Maybe of how, how much more advanced the society is now. I right. mean, that's kind of cool to think about, but that's also not really like expressly said ever. So right. that's kind of us, it's us filling in some blanks. We're retconning on their behalf. Um, which is which is okay, but... That's a big um, move, okay. Yeah, but that's about, that'll wrap us up for visuals. And uh, moving on to our final category, uh, voice acting. And I'll give you a quick rundown. We don't have a lot to talk about here. A uh, couple characters, though, that we didn't get a chance to talk about in the very first episode correct. that have, are reappearing here. Um, yeah, so be cool. beyond we have uh, Scott McAfee as Willie. He's fine. He's uh, he's just kind of... Nerd! Yes, he's a, he's a generic nerd. He's done a lot of voice acting roles over the years. But uh, the two that we, uh, we kind of wanted to highlight here is that we have uh, Dana Tan, a.k.a. Lauren Tom, mm-hmm. who's a DCAU voice acting veteran, has done and a lot of different DC cartoons, not just these main four. Mm-hmm. Uh, was Jinx and Gizmo in Teen Titans. She was Angela Chen on Superman. Uh, various different voices on Justice League as well. Does she do Jinx and Teen Titans Go also? I believe so, yes. Yeah, I think so too. Um, so she's, yeah, she's, she's certainly a, a voice acting, uh, a veteran and has been all over these shows over the years. So I thought she's good. There's a few scenes. Does she do Green Lantern in the future Batman Beyond episodes too? She very well might. I believe I she is right. Green Lantern in, in, uh, the, the jail. I think you're right. Trivia. Trivia. Uh, <laughs> but anyway, uh, I liked, there's a little bit more of Terry getting to go out, like go out with her and be like a good boyfriend to her. Mm hmm. Uh, which is nice to see because again that and that comes from maybe some of the influence of a Spider-Man or of a teenage superhero is right. that's such an easy plot device to fall back on is that Terry keeps letting his girlfriend down and, I and think... it never like and you're always like why is this like really hot girl not just dumping this guy who ne- who like as far as she know just leaves her all the time to do nothing well, or, yeah, or there's go... a psychological condition called codependency I'm not sure <laughs> we don't have time to delve into it on this episode of the Fair DCAU enough. but review. it was good to see like it's sh- you know, showing their relationship a little bit and also like there's a scene near the end where Dana goes up to Willie and tries to like uh, you know like says that she'll like she and Terry will give him a ride home just a little bit like sh- just exploring she's a nice girl mm-hmm. and exploring their relationship a little bit and and Terry you know trying to be to be there for her and actually succeeding I thought was nice Agreed. and then uh, we didn't mention this at all I don't think and uh, we mentioned the character of Nelson but he's voiced by one Seth Green ah the famous Seth yes, Green yes uh, most famously from uh, Without a Paddle of course uh, <laughs> 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 yes sick burn uh, got him <laughs> got it got, got you Seth, Seth Green got, got you we uh, know you're listening uh, <laughs> oh, but, uh, it is kind of funny to have this uh, you know kind of known as a he's, he's a very short skinny like funny nice guy and he's playing this like over the top as we mentioned 80s jock bully right so there's there's some comedy just in that if you if you know what Seth Green looks like but he is so over the top. I think he's like maybe one of the only really good parts of this episode because like every sure. line or every scene is either him leaving his girlfriend Blade to die. Basically, <laughs> there was a scene where she's like holding onto his arm, trying to get her, him to protect her, and he shoves her away and runs. <laughs> so good. Um, he's pretty fantastic. So I wanted to give did, uh, as we're trying to find a little bit of the bright side here, and what is looking like it's going to be one of our lowest ranked episodes yet. Uh, I thought Seth Green as Nelson Nash is pretty good. Yeah. Um, Could he use maybe a little more Batman this week? Yeah, that's actually... My score ended up being 4 out of 10 because of that. Uh, I really felt like there was not enough... Could have been more more Terry. Really a lack of Bruce in this episode. Yeah. And uh, no Derek Powers, no... It's it's a lot of this Willy Watt character who is fine. It's just not an interesting character to me, and I think it needed more... In order to hold my attention, I gave it four out of ten. Did you give your score? I don't believe I have yet. Mine was five out of ten, so right around the same thing there. Um, didn't think anybody was terrible, but uh, as you mentioned, there's definitely there's definitely a lot to be desired here. So uh, that wraps us up. 
I do not hear the bonus point sound. No bonus points for this. So it sounds like uh, we're going to have our final score here. Uh, Mine, 18 out of 40. Uh, What about you? After dropping music down to four uh, (laughs) mid-episode, I I ended up with a score of, uh, let's see, we have uh, 19 out of 30. So definitely our, uh, sorry, out of 40. I don't know why I put 30. 19 (laughs) out of 30. Well, Uh, there we go. Um, I said 30 again. (laughs) 19 out of 40 uh so yeah uh, definitely not our 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 uh, best episode yeah, one of our lowest ranked and again like i didn't hate this the way we hated or i hated brave new metropolis or the way that we both hated a uh, dollar in the underdollars jar no. underdollars but it's not good so. i would rewatchability you can skip this yeah episode. i would definitely say skip this see one. it or skip it i'd skip it all right, well, with that, that brings us to the end of our, our big double feature this week. That's right. Hey, you you win some, you lose some. Some really good, some really mediocre to bad. Yes. Not, not a bad thing, but hey, the worst episode of the DCAU, still a good time, generally. Yes, agree. Still a good time to watch these shows. Absolutely. And uh, all right, we're wrapping up this week. Uh, Cal, since I'm kind of hosting this week, yes. I'll ask you, where can the good folks interact with us on the interwebs? Well, Liam, that's a very good question. Uh, as as you know, as, and the good listeners know, you are the DCAU Twitter guru. Uh, so if you are interested in letting us know, maybe you feel, maybe you like this episode, maybe you uh, appreciate it more than we did, uh, we'd love to hear back from you. Now, the way that you can let us know, there's a couple different ways. First way, and really the only way uh, <laughs> that we're going to be able to, to get feedback from you, uh, is via Twitter. Uh, so you can find us at DCAU review on Twitter. Uh, that's where you will interact. Uh, Liam does the tweeting for us on our behalf, uh, and he's, uh, we've developed some good friendships in the DCAU community. Love talking to people. Love getting some feedback. Um, I enjoy w- seeing people, um, you know, interact with us and and figure out uh, you know certain opinions on things or sending out fan art or or whatever. It's a, it's a cool community definitely. to be a part of. So definitely follow us and uh, tweet us at DCAU Review. Um, now, Cal, you we know, do have a Facebook page. Allegedly. Allegedly. But I, I'd like you to tell the good listeners, if you could, why that's not really a great way to interact with us. Well, if a Facebook page falls in the forest and nobody's around <laughs> to like it, <laughs> is it really there? Um, so uh, the answer to that question is still unanswered. Or the answer to that question, yes, remains unanswered because, uh, you know, Mark Zuckerberg, the uh, CEO of Facebook and supposed human being... <laughs> Um, uh, and general just leaker of, of personal information, yeah. um, has, uh, made it incredibly difficult for people that don't have a lot of money or who are unwilling to spend thousands of dollars to quote unquote reach unquote, uh, yes. reach their audiences, uh, via money. Uh, so we refuse to give into those demands and uh, we will not pay Mark Zuckerberg a dime of our hardware earned cash. So you can find us at facebook.com slash DCAU review. Uh, I would type that into your uh, into your address bar because you're not going to find us pretty much any other way. <laughs> uh, so if you want to like us on there or comment, uh, you know, we check it here and there. We post new episodes there. Uh, even better, check out DCAUreview.com. Uh, we have the entire archive of our whole episodes on there. You can sort uh, by character. You can sort by series, um, villains. Uh, it, it's it's a good time. You can even comment on there. So so that's even better than Facebook. But uh, and of course, subscribe to us on iTunes, Google Podcasts, or wherever you listen to podcasts. Streaming every week at dcaureview.com. Yeah, we would really appreciate it if if you do subscribe to us on those sites. Give us a, if you would give us five stars. Give us a review. I know that's a little bit of a hassle, but it does help us get our podcast out to more uh, more more eyeballs slash ear. Without paying Mark Zuckerberg right. a dime, more eardrums on the podcast, I guess. <laughs> I don't, I don't know what you call that, but uh, I like it. either way, we'd appreciate that. But we're, however you choose to listen to us, we really appreciate you listening to us this week. Absolutely. Uh, so we're out of time this week. So with that being said, I'm Liam, and I'm Cal, and we'll be back soon with another episode of the DCAU Review. Bye bye. <laughs>